Um, I want to welcome everyone to uh, Utah State Board of Education um, board meeting. It's May 7th. Um, appreciate all the work and that's been um, put into prepare to help us get prepared for the things that we need to do. It's going to be a big day. We do have an agenda before us. We'll try to stick to it as best we can to the times and that. And uh, let's let's get going. Um, first order of business. I'll do a. And will this work okay, Brittany? If I do a kind of a roll call, or do you have to unmute everyone? No, everyone should currently have control of their own microphone. Okay. Um, this is all that is intended for this roll calls for those that are attending this meeting. Uh, Member Belknap. Member Belknap. Member Cannon. Board Member Cannon. Member Huntsman's here. I'm going to go back through it one more time. We just want to work out how we can make sure that we're being heard. Uh, Member Belknap. Um, I'm actually on the phone now, but Chair, I, I can't hear it through my computer. Okay. I don't know why. All right, so you're on your phone. Okay. It's just a little call to get the meeting started. Member Earl. I thought I've heard her voice as the test runs. So, you can for board member Cannon as well. Member Cannon is here. Can you hear me? Yes. With board member Cannon. Okay. So, board member Earl, we. I'm not sure if we have a mic problem or. Um. Board member Newell. Here. Okay. Thank you. Board member Nielsen. I thought I understand he was going to have some challenges coming on and off, so we'll watch for him. So we're back to board member Earl. I'll send her a text to see if she needs anything. Okay. I just texted her also. Okay. All right. Well, let's get let's get started. So, good morning. Um, got through the roll call. Uh, board member message. Uh, board member Lear. Did you have a message I'm today? Ready. I do have a message. Are you ready? Go ahead. Yes. Yes, we are. Okay. Um, I've been thinking a lot, and if you're not teaching or parenting, maybe you've also a lot of thinking time um, and I've been thinking a lot about integrity we've seen some recent examples of leaders with integrity and others without some of my personal favorites are unexpected some are familiar some I've not heard of six months ago I would include in this list Senator Mitt Romney Dr. Penny Fauci our own Dr. Angela Dunn and a friend of mine who's an ER doctor a mother of three children who goes to work every day an environment that threatens your own health. I'm also a quote person. I love writers who artfully use words of beauty and insight. The following quote about integrity by Helen Keller is the perfect statement in this extraordinary time. And this is from her short book I called The Time of My Life or My Life. They took away what should have been my eyes, but I remember Milton's paradise. They took away what should have been my ears. Beethoven came and wiped away. They took away what should have been my tongue. But I talked with God when I was young. He would not let them take away my soul. Possessing them, they'll possess the whole. Thanks for letting me share that. Okay. Um, thank you, board member. 
Okay, next we'll get to, we're gonna go to our education highlights. Um, Deputy Superintendent Patty Foreman, do you wanna introduce um, our, our first guest in recognition? Yes, thank you. Um, good morning, board members. It's an honor to be before you today to introduce you to two inspiring youth who have demonstrated strength and courage. So today we'll, we will be honoring Utah's two national finalists for their essays in Utah's 20th annual Do the Right Thing Challenge. It's part of the national campaign to stop violence. We would like to thank them for their courage and their perseverance. So Kuhn Nguyen, it's USB's uh, prevention specialist, will be giving you more information. Kuhn? Good morning. Um, can you hear me okay? Um, yes. Great. Um, so the Do the Right Thing Challenge work in collaboration with the National Campaign to say Stop Youth Violence. Um, the first step is to end youth violence by talking about it. And so annually we send the information to school superintendent, um, middle school principal and teacher encourage them um, to involve seven and eighth grade um, to participate and involve. I suggested to have to tie to the challenge into the coursework are available on our website and we asked um, teachers to do that. Students can research youth violence as part of the history class, write a poem as part of the English class, or even consider youth violence from a social science perspective. Um, they had the duty to write um, and answer three questions. How has youth violence affected my life? How are the cause of youth violence uh, what are the causes of youth violence and, and what can my community um, do to reduce youth violence? In Utah this year, this is the first time the State Board of Education is uh, locally sponsoring the program, and we are happy to have that partnership. This is our 20th year in our state. Um, USBE has been uh, participating, but this is the first year sponsoring that. For this year, school district reported over 2,200 students participated in classroom. Over 2,000 students wrote about youth violence, and then um, nearly 1,100 of them choose to submit the writing. Students from University of Utah, Weber, um, Weber State, and USPE um, Prevention and At-Risk staff help participate and read all of this first round. And we select the top two winner per school. And then from that, we have a group of VIP judges that um, review those and ranking them and we want to thanks uh, and recognize uh, member thorne and Mer member leah help as a vip judge this year to um, rank this student so um, that's um, 26 students uh, as a winner and we give them a scholarship and um, because of the time constraint uh, we only able to recognize um, for this presenting to you two national finalists at this event so um, that is just a little bit about the Do the Right Thing event. Thank you, Kuhn. Um, as I've been able to uh, also read through these essays for the past two years, and I have to tell you, they are very heartfelt and meaningful. And when you see what our youth are going through and the perseverance they have, we know that we're truly in good hands and they were very honest in their essays. Our third, one of, we have two uh, state finalists that are going on to nationals and we invited both of them today to come. And uh, Caleb wasn't able to come, but I'm reading, um, I'm gonna read his excerpt so that you can hear um, just how honest um, these young folks are. So this is from Caleb Buck, um, Union Middle School. I used to be a bully back in first grade. There were a lot of things going on at home that I couldn't handle. My dad was always at work and my mom was either sick or hanging out with friends. So I was always looking out for my siblings. A little while later, my mom was introduced to drugs. And from there, it all went downhill. So as you can see, these are heartfelt stories, but when you start to read them, it talks about how they overcome these and what they're doing to contribute to solve youth violence and the surrounding support that they have. I'd like to introduce to you now, um, Sophia Parsons. She's our other state finalist and um, she's going to be moving on to nationals as well. Sophia, can you share your experience in writing the essay? What inspired you and then read your excerpt? Hello, uh, is everything working all right? It is, and we can see you, Sophia. That's good. Uh, this is my mom. She's cool. <laughs> She's here to join us, too. <laughs> Hello, mom. 
Um, writing the essay was honestly not something I thought it was going to be as big as it is. Um, back in November, we just had like our unit on like the outsiders and that had like a very important theme of youth violence. Uh, and so I just thought I'd write an essay for like the heck of it. And then I turned it in because why wouldn't I? <laughs> and it kind of blew up. It was nifty. Oh, what else do I say? <laughs> uh, go ahead and, and read your excerpt and there might be some questions from board members afterwards. Do I have an excerpt? Did you grab it? I don't think I did. <laughs> Would you like for me to read it? <laughs> uh, yes, please. <laughs> okay. Um, the excerpt that uh, we had picked out when we were doing the presentations was, and I'm sure I'm not going to read it in your amazing voice. So um, it says, too much to say and not enough time. I'm a wordy girl with a lot on her mind. So listen to me when the sun meets the sky, and I'll try my hardest to tell you why. The youth of our nation, so scared and used become victims and inflictors of pain and abuse. That is powerful. I don't so board, board members, do you have any questions um, for Sophia? Board members, any questions for Sophia? Well, some while they're gathering their thoughts, um, Sophia, we're really proud of you and your example and your willingness to participate in this program and put this essay together. It takes, takes a lot of work and, and it's something that you didn't have to do, but you chose to do it. And so I, I'm really excited for you and looking forward to many more great and wonderful choices as you, as you move on um, with life. And I, I do have one question for you and that is, after this experience, or do you feel like you can encourage others to participate uh, in, in writing and um, this particular program? Um, that's what I hope I can do. Like, I'm not in charge of anybody, but I hope that, like, just like me being some kid from like the middle of Nowheresville, Utah, like having this sort of reach, like does like inspire somebody else to like share their story and I don't know, and tribute to the message. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, Brittany, I can't see if any other hands are raised in this. Yes, there are uh, board member Davis and board hey. member Lear. Hey, board member Davis. I love listening to your writing, and I just want you to know that the the pen is more powerful than the sword. So keep up the good work and don't stop writing ever. Thanks for sharing your your um, your words with us. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Davis. Uh, board Member Lear. Um, I am asked that the students are still reading The Outsiders. I think that is a great. Uh, uh, kind of an unsung hero of a, of a book in many ways and has been being read for many years. I also read many of these essays. I was one of the lucky ones that was able to do that. Um, and I was amazed at how sincere and forthcoming the students were, just like Sophia. So thank you for that willingness to, to be authentic and provide your, your sincere thoughts. Thank you, Board Member Lear. Uh, board Vice Member Thorpe, then Board Member Haynes. So I got uh, Board Member Thorpe. Part, so. Board Member Thorpe. I just wanted to say from one wordy girl to another, congratulations. I was also a guest judge on the competition, and I just want to congratulate you and say keep it up. and. Um, I love the voice in your essay, and I hope that you'll keep writing and keep inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Vice Chair Cummins, was there others? I didn't. Board Member Haynes. Okay, Member Haynes. Thank you, Chair. Sophia, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, great. 
Um, you're out at Fort Harriman Middle School, a great school, uh, and you've got a great teacher. Is it, uh, this is Dahmer? Is she your teacher there? Yeah, she is. Tell me, she's she's had a history of working well with students and helping them in their writing. She's fantastic. Can you tell me about the relationship you had with her and how that helped you develop such a great essay? Um, well, she's been really great throughout the entire year. She's been great at helping students open up and uh, be more enthusiastic about writing. Like, even if like they walk into the classroom with like this mindset that like, oh, I'm a bad writer. I'm not good at like grammar or English. She still like encourages them to share their own stories and she's been super helpful, helpful and uh, supportive throughout this entire process too. So. Do you think she helped you get to where you are today through through um, your writing and the success that you've got currently? Yeah, like uh, I remember uh, we had this assignment at the beginning of the year where we had to like just write a letter about whatever we wanted to our teacher and like she wrote back like her own letter and I felt like this very nice connection. And it was like, oh, somebody is reading and then, like somebody else is going to see what I write at the end of the day, so. Great, I love it. Well, congratulations, Sophia. I'm excited for what's in store for you. And uh, I'm happy that you've got such a great relationship with your teacher, that's great. Thank you. Any any other vice chair comments in, in the queue? Um, can I just, as a parent, uh, chime in on the last comment about the teacher? Yes. Um, her teacher has been, sorry, I get a little emotional. It's nice to see uh, teachers who really take time to um, see their students and see them on a level that uh, not everyone gets to. So it's been a really emotional trip for us to have such great teachers for, for Sophia this last year. Thank you for your, your, your comments. That Sophia is certainly supported by a fantastic mother too. <laughs> yes. Um, Vice Chair Cummins, is there anyone else in the queue? Uh, no, there is not. Okay. That's, so, Sophia, thank you so much for coming on to our board meeting. And um, we wish you the best of luck moving forward. So, thank you. Patty, did you, um, Deputy Superintendent Patty Norman, did you have any concluding comments? Yes, I just wanted to thank um, our prevention specialist, Kun Wen, who um, has just recently come to us and bringing this amazing opportunity for students and really advocating on their behalf. Um, he's a, a treasure now. At, at, um, he was before, and we're so happy that we're able to bring him um, and give students a voice and, and let it be heard. So thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you. We will move on next to uh, the pres Presidential Spirit of the Community Award and uh, our Public Affairs Director, Jeff Van Holten. Are you going to take point on that? Yes, I am. Can you hear and see me? Yes. Can I, can I interrupt really quick? Yes. Sorry. Yes. Um, so I currently is, is, uh, don't have the ability to unraise hands anymore. And so if everyone can just be really uh, vigilant on checking their hands so that we know if you want to speak to this topic. So as we get into another topic, I know if you're wanting to speak to that or if it's left over from last time. So if everyone can please check their hands on a regular basis. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you. Okay. Great. Well, I have the honor today to introduce to you the two winners of the 2020 Prudential Spirit of Community Award. This is the 25th year that this award has been given. Uh, there are two students chosen from each state um, for their outstanding service in their community. This year, um, the award was presented to Sydney Ward and Owen Hughes. Uh, Sydney attend is a senior at Salem Hills High School, so go Skyhawks. Um, she worked with her history teacher to hold a mock election on the day before the 2016 election, and she drew a 75% turnout, which um, in contrast to the national turnout of 41.4%, um, she definitely found a way to get students engaged and show up. 
Um, I'm sorry, I, I'm now, if you now see me, I didn't realize I was not seen. Um, in 2019, she founded Project 320, and that is designed to encourage young people to get involved in the political process. Um, she is the executive director. She spends about 30 hours a week planning and writing grant applications, recruiting volunteers, posting candidate platforms, uh, social media campaigns, you name it, she's doing it in the political process. Um, she holds meetings for youth to hear state representatives and candidates, and she is currently interning for the Lieutenant Governor, Spencer Cox. Quite an interesting time to be um, interning with the Lieutenant Governor. Um, Owen Hughes, he is an eighth grader at Bountiful Junior High, go Eagles, um, right up the street from my house, not too far. Uh, he converted a library at the Veterans Transitional Housing Facility called the Valor House. Um, and he turned that library into a music and game room and organized monthly game nights for the residents at the Valor House. Um, he also worked with his Boy Scout troop to get donations of games and musical instruments for the room and put up a, solici a solicitation box at his church. Um, he cleaned and checked all the donated items uh, to make sure that they worked and then organized them for the residents. He's also coordinated uh, continually a game night with the residents of uh, and members of the National Veterans Group and his soccer team. Uh, so he's very involved in providing those um, activities for residents. That's great. So they were honored um, every year. They, there is a banquet uh, and a, a ceremony in DC, typically. Um, this year, they were not able to attend uh, any ceremony in DC due to the recent situation with the pandemic. Uh, each student was there, uh, thus given an online ceremony, and it was hosted by Kristen Bell. For those who are unaware of Kristen Bell, she is the voice of Anna from Frozen, or if you like the TV show The Good Place, she is the main character of The Good Place. Also a great Instagram to follow, she's very funny. Um, each student was given a $1,000 scholarship, and in lieu of the trip to D.C., they were given a $25,000 um, amount to donate to the charity of their choice locally um, to help with the COVID-19 response. So with that, I will turn it back to the board members for any questions or comments for Sydney or for Owens. Okay, questions and comments from board members. Yeah, this is uh, Scott Nielsen. Which, do uh, you know the name of the uh, history teacher at Salem Hills High School? I'm just inquiring. I do not, but Sydney Ward is on the line. Maybe we can pass it to Sydney if she'd like to answer that. Sure. Um, the history teacher I originally worked with was Kristen Vandegraaff. Um, and then for the last few years, I've also worked with Doug Welton um, to make these projects happen. Oh, I know them both very well. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, other questions from or comments from board members? Vice Chuck Cummins, anyone in the queue? No, there are no hands. Okay. Well, um, so who's on? We have we have Sydney Ward is is tied in and is. Is Owen also? Owen is also on. Okay, so I, I, I just have a question for each, and let's start with Sydney first. Is um, Sydney, congratulations, and thank you for this great work. Uh, what's next for you? What's your next um, project, and then <laughs> Owen, I'll have you answer the same question. Um, well, this fall, I'll be at BYU, um, hopefully studying political science if classes go back on campus. Um, but I think I really want to focus on voter registration efforts and making sure people turn out to vote for 2020, of course, but also the more local elections that we have coming up in the next few years. So I want to make sure that people know that they can get involved um, at whatever level uh, in government and the decisions that affect them. Yeah. And um, thank you, uh, Owen. Same question. What What's your next big project? Do we see Owen at all? Am I on? 
You're on. Owen, what what's next for you? Uh, so what's next for me is um, I'm planning on doing continuing my uh, game nights every every month with uh, Continue Mission. It's a local um, veterans program that just helps out um, with veterans and. So I'm just planning on continuing my game nights with them, and uh, yeah. Well, good. Well, thank you. Any other questions or comments from from board members? Vice Chair do you see anyone in the queue? Superintendent Dixon. Hey, Superintendent Dixon. Thank you, um, thank you, Chairman Huntsman. Um, I. I'm so proud of you, Kittles. This is State Superintendent Sydney Dixon, spelled differently, uh, with two E's, Miss Sydney. Um, Owen and Sydney, you both chose projects that were hard to do. They're not typical of service projects that we might see kiddos engaged in. And can you talk about the skills that you develop to just lean into things that are hard? It's hard to engage your peers in voting for example and that's such an important project it's, it's hard to get kids sometimes excited about that process it's hard to go into places where um maybe into places where the citizens aren't or oh and in your case are struggling and some people might be turned off by communicating with them and playing games with them so what are some skills that you developed that made you feel comfortable in both of these settings Um, I definitely learned how to lean into relationships with allies and adults that were willing to help. Um, I had some incredible mentors that were always there to give advice or um, just offer their support in whatever way they could. Um, and also learn to lean into the fun of it. It's hard to get people engaged in politics, like you said, um, but an I voted sticker or food often motivates and that goes a long way and so i think at the end of the day we have to remember to really humanize the people that we're working alongside and realize that this is for everybody and that makes it a whole lot more, less scary thank you i'm super proud of you how about, how about Owen? so um i think a couple of things i've learned is um how to like communicate better with people outside. So I, I usually don't like email or call people, but with this big, big project coming up, I had to, um, I had to email people every day, call people every day. I had to learn more communication skills just to get my project going. And also another one would probably be um, just like, uh, probably just hanging out with like the veterans was just really fun, and um, I yeah. Good job, thanks so much, Owen. Anyone else in the queue, Vice Chair? No. Okay. As Cindy and Owen, thank you just so much for your community service and. Then I've, I've been surrounded by wonderful, wonderful people that have done it for decades. And it's there's a euphoria that comes from, from giving that service. I'm sure you're probably a little bit addicted to that. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the many wonderful things that you're gonna do in your, in your future. Our, our community absolutely needs people, young people, all people like yourself participating in community service. So thank you for your example to your the youth and to the students here in this stage. Um, Jeff, is there any, did you have any concluding comments or? No, just thank you both for all of your amazing service that you do and congratulations. Yes, thank you. Okay, well, we're gonna continue on with our agenda.